There we go. I think everything is on now. Okay, I'm going to scoot that over so nobody can see that, or I can't see it and it doesn't confuse me. Good morning. Everything is on. Everything is, yes. Alrighty. Good morning. It is very, very early in the morning. I am still drinking my coffee. I um, had a very hard time going to bed last night. I am starting something that I have never done before. I recently, and by recently I mean in August, I found Scrapbook Generation sketches. I had no idea they existed, didn't know what they were, um, but I was starving for new inspiration, for, for lack of a better word. Close to my heart had come out with, well actually at the time when I found them they had not come out with a new catalog yet, so I didn't know there were new books, but I wasn't sure if there was going to be new books because the last catalog cycle they didn't have any, they didn't make any new books at all. Which, again, I have every every how-to book close to my heart has ever done, but I was just, I've done those layouts backwards, forwards, upside down, sideways, however you could do them, I've done them, and I was just starving for new inspiration. So, I was watching um, some scrapbook videos, and everybody kept talking about Allison Davis, Allison Davis, Allison Davis, scrapbook generation, and I was like, what the heck is this? So I looked it up and found all of her sketch PDF workbooks and or or ebooks or however you want to call them and I went to town I think about four that night and I put them on my iPad so that I could take them with me to retreat so that all I had to take was my iPad to retreat I wasn't taking all of my how-to books so during retreat, I was just cranking out the layouts. I loved these um, sketches. So when I got back, I was again watching more videos, and I started hearing about this 6x6 paper pad class that she had started in May. Now, by the time I found it, the class was long closed. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. I'll just do some more research. Well, she opened it back up. Now, as of today... As of what day is it? It is October 5th, 2020. The class is closed. Today is the first day that we start the class, so there's no, no new members coming in. But basically, for future reference, if you're perusing through her her sketches and you, and you open one up and it says that there's a coordinating Facebook group class, what it is is you purchase that bundle of sketches, which the bundle that we're working with is 20 sketches. I paid... $12, I think, $12, $13, something ridiculously low, um, and then what you do is you find that there's normally a link for the Facebook group, so you hit that, and then one of the questions is what was your order number for those sketches, and once she verifies your order number, you're in the group. Now, once it starts, sorry, I'm falling out of my chair, once it starts, she will hide the group, and then we just all start going. So today is day one, week one, and there are 20 weeks because there's 20 sketches. I did a little bit of prep work last night. I went through and made my stars. There, there's my camera. I went through and made my stars. Excuse me, and I stitched them because it took probably three hours. But then again, I was just goofing off watching movies, that type of thing. Now, the only thing that she has asked with this class is that we not show the original sketch. So I have moved it off behind me so that I don't accidentally show it. And really, for the amount of stuff she does in this class and the amount of backup material and um, other PDFs and videos and everything that I've noticed just from this morning that she puts in this class, it is not too much for her to ask. Don't show my original sketch. Um, if you have the original sketches, it is the 6x6 um, six six paper pads in the in the in the scrapbook generation store so you can buy all the sketches that we're working on um so i'm going to just keep those off to the side we are allowed to show our layouts our personal layouts when they're finished we just cannot show the actual sketch that she put together and you know what that's not too much to ask i'm i'm good with that uh, okay side note um i haven't streamed lately because i am battling allergies I'm going to try not to sound like a snotty mess, but I wanted to go ahead and get this done. 
this morning. My meds have not kicked in yet because I have to do laundry later on because I'm going out of town tomorrow. Um, my mother and I are going to go out of town for a little over a week, so I'm actually going to be late on week two. Um, but that's okay. It's, it's, she's, she's pretty much said it's okay if you, if you have to work at your own pace, which good because all of us have lives too. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not wearing makeup because I've been rubbing my eyes so badly. My meds have not kicked in. I'm going to try not to sound and sniff and snot all over the place. I may sneeze. So that, that being said, I've got hand sanitizer on the desk. I've got a full box of Kleenexes. I have a trash can right next to me. Let's just work. Okay. So what I did last night is I basically went through and cut three different sizes of stars. And these are going to be hard to see. Let me put them on my, on my paper pad. I cut three different sizes of stars. And these stars are just generic stars that I bought from Amazon. Close to my heart has some. Um, but they're not what I wanted. So I just went to Amazon and I found like a pack of 20 nesting stars. And it was, I think I paid seven bucks. They're not the best quality. They're very thin, but they work. I mean, as long as I don't cut them with wire snippers, I think we'll be okay. So I did three different sizes of these. I'm gonna go ahead and set them aside in case I need to make more stars. I also have my cuddle bug off to the side so I don't have to dig it out of the closet. Oh, I need to show you guys my new acquisition because of Biscuit Baby. This is a metal bowl from Craftsman, Craftsman Tools. There we go. I found it in the tool section of Lowe's yesterday. It's magnetic. So not only will it stick to my desk because my desk is magnetic, but the dies stick inside the bowl. I was having a problem with biscuits when I was die cutting. would just walk up and grab my die and take off. You ever had to chase a cat around the house to get your dies back? So... I have it in the metal bowl. I have it off to the side over here. Hopefully he can't get a hold of it. I did my journaling on vellum. I'll be cutting that down in a little bit. And then I have my photos. They're all 4x4 four four photos that I'm using today. And then the class itself is 4x4 four four paper pads. 4x4, four four, I'm so sorry. 6x6 six six paper pads. And the goal of the class is to use your paper pads. I only have three. And I just bought them like a week and a half ago. And then I bought them for photos that are in 2020. So they don't really fit the photos that I'm working on right now. But this is also a good way to go through your pattern paper. Because four six by six squares is 12 by 12. So... What I've done is I've just cut some paper, paper down to six by six squares, and that's what I'm going to be using. And actually, I think I am gonna distress these a little bit. I was thinking whether or not I really wanted to, but I think I'm going to. So I'll get that out real fast. I've got my, this is just the um, zip strip for the colors that are in this paper pack. I just threw it up here so I wouldn't lose it chocolate chocolate okay um what else is there before we get started I've got my stitching template because I will be stitching on one side of the paper I did all the stars just because it takes a while There was something else I was going to say about these, and I can't remember. I'll remember in a moment. I do have meds on board, so please bear with me. Um, let's just get started. My brain will catch up eventually. I have coffee, and I have a little pack of crackers off to the side because I typically don't eat in the mornings because I don't like to eat in the mornings, but... Somehow, when I stream with you guys, I get hungry, so I just brought a pack of crackers with me. So I'm just going to distress these edges real fast. I thought about distressing each individual star, 
And then I, once I got to stitching them, I was like, um, no, I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to distress the stars. Actually, I'm going to move this one because he's not part of one side of the layout. He's on the other side. So really what I did last night is I popped in a movie and I did all of the stars and then I just separated my thread for this morning so that you didn't have to watch me separate thread. Now for the example, there was an example video this morning that goes along with this class. She used four different patterns of six by six paper. That's what I was gonna talk about with these photos. The photos that I'm scrapbooking are Rosenfeld, Rosenfeld's Memorial in Washington, DC. And if you remember from history, his presidency was a very hard time in the United States. There was there was food lines, bread lines. It was, there was no work. There was, you know, everybody was depressed because there was no work, but there was, everybody would sit around the, the radio for his, I think he called them fireside chats, I think is what they were called. And it was just, you know, not only was it from 1930s, I wanna say, I didn't find any dates on these ahead of time. I'm just going by the, the memory of my history classes, and I could be very wrong in that. But I wanted a vintage feel for these photos, but I also wanted a patriotic feel because he is a president. So the original sketch has stars, and normally you can change up the element however you feel like you need to. But I wanted to keep the stars because... When I think presidents, I think stars and stripes, I think um, eagles, I think blue and red and white, but I didn't want to go blue, red, and white because I wanted the vintage feel with the stars. So I'm kind of combining both, both elements for this layout. And hopefully it, hopefully it comes together. I don't know if it will. I did not do a dry run. So... these really quickly and then I will clean my workspace real fast so I don't get ink everywhere. Dumplings in the window. He's enjoying the morning sun. All right, hold on one moment. We are almost done with this. Okay. Let me get a baby wipe real fast and just wipe the surface because you get little shavings off those four by uh, finger daubers. Well, that's drying really fast. I'm going to change the camera angle because I'm not liking, I'm sitting more in the corner today. So let me just change this real fast. I don't normally do this with you guys joining me, but scoot that over a little bit because I keep working in that corner. And you guys can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Alright. That's better because I keep gravitating to this side of the desk. Okay, sketch this first. Okay. I think I had it laid out like this. Okay. Now I'm not going to need very much adhesive because the thread is going to hold the adhesive on. Or I'm sorry, going to hold the paper on. I'm 
gonna do I'm gonna make sure my wallpaper pattern paper is right side up okay yay alrighty okay let me get a pokey pad So basically what I'm going to be doing is a border around the entire layout. I am in love with this sticky roller. It is... We're going to making sure that the holes... Okay. I think there's, I think the ones that I wanted the same on both sides. Okay. I am loving this little stitchy, sticky roller. <clears throat> Pardon. This stuff off to the side for a moment. So I've got room to stitch or room to pokey poke. Now, like I was saying in the in past videos with this particular little ruler, the holes to poke are a little bit bigger than my pokey stick, which I like because rulers of a few years, like a few years ago, the holes are tiny and you can't get your pokey stick in. So you basically have to poke to kind of indent the paper and then go back through again and re-poke the holes. And on this particular pattern paper, I'm having trouble seeing this. And this is just the pattern paper. It matches the template. So I'm having trouble seeing the holes. see now that it's on the dark it's very easy to see but anyway these holes are a little bit bigger than my pokey stick so they're not going to be completely military straight and that's okay too I'm okay with that so a little update on the scrap room if you follow the Facebook group or my Facebook group I've been posting pictures of the update and the work that we've been doing on the new studio and that's the other reason why I'm probably not going to stay current with this class, like, week for week, because I am almost positive that sometime in the next 20 weeks, I will be able to move into my room. Um, this weekend, we were able to get the entire desk painted. And then my husband was able to paint the stamp racks, which I don't know if you can see above the paper. There's my, paper, there's my paper racks, and then above the paper racks, there's a white rack. That rack used to be brown, and I had three of those for two for my stamp pads, and then one for my Tim Holtz stamp pads and my ribbons and stuff. So not only did he get those painted for me, but he also modified my stamp pad rack to accommodate the new close to my heart size that's been around for quite a few years now. He modified one rack for me to fit the new pads and then so I had one rack that was new size and one rack that was old size. Well now my old rack, my old pads are getting phased out and I'm getting more new pads. So he went and retrofitted the He retrofitted the stamp pads for me, or the stamp pad rack for me. Now 
I'm just trying to line up the corner. Because when I first start, I don't poke the first two holes. Just to give me room to turn a corner. So we got all of that painted yesterday. We're letting it all dry very well. And then he will be able to assemble the desk for me. And then the only building part of it again that he's gonna need to do is the actual rack dividers for my paper. If you look over that side into my IKEA Calyx unit, you will notice I took one of the black bins out and I put all of my pattern paper in. And you heard that right. That one square is all of my pattern paper. And one side of that unit, I'm gonna have two units backed up together to make an island. And one side's gonna be pattern paper and one side is gonna be nothing but cardstock. So as you can see, I'm gonna have seven squares free to expand my pattern paper. Now what I may do is I'm gonna have him put dividers in the top four squares to start off so that I can kind of spread my paper out a little bit and spread my beans out so they're not quite so squished up and it will be easier for me to search paper and then of course the other calyx unit that's going to be on the other side I'm going to have him do all eight squares and build dividers for me so that all of my cardstock can go in So that's going to be the only other quote building that he has to do. And then the layout of the room is easy. We just are going to take down each of my shelves one at a time, put it in the room, put everything back on the shelf, and then <laughs> take down the next shelf. Because I have two large container store shelves hanging on the wall. So. Those will need to be moved. But once that is, you know, once once the shelf or once the table is put together, it's gonna go pretty quickly, I believe. Just lining up the holes real fast. But it is very exciting now. I felt really bad for him yesterday because we thought we had the table completely painted carried it completely up the stairs, got it placed. We got all the legs painted and then brought them back up and the table needed another coat of paint. You could just, you could see it just needed another coat of paint. So we had to cart it back downstairs. And these are not light tables. These are furniture grade, two by fours, four by fours and plywood three-quarter inch plywood so it is not light tables at all so he has carted them up and down the stairs twice now and then I went through and I finally was able to get the drawers into one of my calyx units yesterday I bought four units, so one unit for each drawer, or one unit for each square of one of my Calyx units. I'm going to have three total. And one's going to be like a little side buffet type thing, and then the other two will make it into an island. And 
and those are all built. My daughter came over a week ago, and she's just like, I need to build something. I need to build. I need to build. So I was like, okay, have at it. I got three units that need to be built. Have fun. And she sat there and built every single one of them. So I wasn't going to complain because I didn't have to do it. And she's also offered to come over on move day and help me get everything moved and situated. And I don't know if we're going to film that process or just get it done and I do a room tour when we're done. I don't know yet. Part of me wants to film the process. But do you guys really want to sit there and watch somebody move into their room? I don't know. Because while I know where a lot of stuff is going, um, there's also a bit of cleaning, a bit of purging, a bit of organizing, uh, figuring out new organizational products and usages and, you know, and it's going to be a bit before he can build the shelves for my closet. And while the room itself is much bigger than what I have now, the closet is not. The closet is much smaller and it has a window. So I'm going to have to figure something else out as far as how I have things configured in this closet. Where are you? I think you're right there. But one of the things that I figured out is I'm going to be putting my stamp racks. There's that shelf right there. And then I just imagine it's going to be shelf stamp racks, kind of like that white one is right there. And then the calyx unit is going to go where the paper packs are right now. So it's going to kind of like be a little buffet area. And in between the calyx unit and my shelving unit, I want all of my stamp pad racks up there. And that will lessen the amount of time I need to keep getting into the closet so the cats won't get lost in the closet because they do. I think I'm going to leave that there. Well, let's put one there. Okay. Yeah, if the closet door is open, they're like game on. So I want to lessen that of losing cats in the closet. Okay. So I am using, almond is not a color listed on the zip strip. The colors listed with this paper pack are black, espresso, French vanilla, mint, I'm sorry, mink, or toffee. And toffee I'm using in a different part of the layout, but it's a little bit too sand colored for my taste. So as far as the stitching is concerned, so I'm going to go with almond. And the DMC number, if you follow the DMC threads, is 3022 for this particular color that matches the close to my heart colors. If you don't follow DMC numbers and you just want to go for something that you like and that is pretty, go for it. That's fine. I try to match up my colors with the close to my heart colors so that it kind of coordinates a little bit better. Now when I'm going for or doing a lot of stitching, I will go for a longer needle just to make it easier to hold. Now last night when I was doing the stars, I went with a smaller diameter needle and a shorter needle because the stars were so delicate. And I also, instead of using three strands, I took it down to two strands. And as you can see, They turned out really well. So, and that's just freestyle hand poking. I did I didn't have a template at all for these. So 
was kind of proud of that. Let me just get this started. And I don't think I've missed any holes. Doing a quick check real fast. It doesn't look like I missed any holes. So we're doing good. All right. So this is going to be the longest part of the entire layout. Everything else is pre-cut and kind of ready to go. But the stitching is going to be the longest part. So if you're watching this back on playback and you don't want to sit through all of this, fast forward. It's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Or if you don't want to do all the stitching, you want to do faux stitching, by all means, just find a marker or a fine tip pen or a felt tip pen that matches your paper selections and do faux stitching. You do not have to hand stitch. I just happen to enjoy it. I find it very relaxing. I'm falling out of my chair. So I just, I love hand stitching. I love the aspect that it adds to the pages. So I take the time and I do it. Um, if you have a sewing machine, the, it's a great application for your sewing machine. Hi, Dumpling. How are you doing, baby? I know. Um, I can't hold your hand while you sleep today. No, I have to use my hands. You can sleep there, it's okay. He's like on the very edge of the table. If he moves, he's going to fall off. <laughs> I have been trying to teach the kitties that if it's on this wood grain, they can't lay on it while I'm working. I'm obviously making really good headway with that. You can tell they listen very well. Um, they're expertly trained, as you can see. So he's just gonna curl up and take a nap while I'm working. And I will try not to poke him with a needle if he gets in my way. That's the biggest thing when I'm stitching that I have to be careful of, is where are my needles? Um, a lot of times if I have to leave the room, I will put my needle down, I'll put it on the cork board, put my paper over it, and put the, put the tape dispenser on top of that to keep them from accidentally stepping on a needle. And I will hide this thing that's got push pins hanging out of it because they will bite one of the needles or the push pins and take off with it and I do not want them swallowing it. So you're gonna fall off boo boo. So I've kind of had to go back to the toddler mentality of keeping my room toddler safe for the kittens. In fact, the only reason my paper is up in those racks now, in the calyx unit, is because Furry Britches here decided that it was a great idea just to walk on my papers and lay down and just have a snooze right on my paper. No, we're not doing that. I'm not having my paper bent up because somebody thinks it's comfortable. So... This is not an intricate stitch, it is just a back stitch in a line. That's it. And right now it doesn't look like you can see the thread, but once I get into the darker areas, you can see it quite easily. What? I know. He's a mama's boy until daddy comes in the room. Daddy comes in the room, I no longer exist. Or biscuits, I no longer exist at all. He is a pure 100% daddy baby. So what I was saying before Dumpling came over, I just remembered, is if you have a sewing machine, this is a very quick process. I had a sewing machine at one time. 
I could not get it to work properly. It drove me crazy. I almost threw it out the window. I finally just sold it and it was not a cheap sewing machine. Because I was of the adage, I'm gonna learn how to use it. I'll use it on paper. I'll use it on fabric. I can't sew a button. What made me think I was gonna do that? And it just confounded me. I couldn't, it just drove me crazy. So I just got rid of it. And yep, hand stitching takes a little bit longer, but you get the same results. What? So I need to go through my luggage. I am packed because we leave tomorrow. But I need to go back through it because I have room. And I pack the same way I always pack. And I have room in my luggage, so I'm forgetting something. I need to go back through and just kind of look at look at the way I packed. Because what I do is I, th I think about what product and what what item I'm putting in my luggage as I use it. So my toiletry bag, my how I get dressed in the morning, that's how I pack my luggage. So I've just got to rethink my mornings and go, okay, do I have everything? Now, there are some items I'm not having to take, like I'm not having to take a day bag, like a, a spare backpack or something for day trips. I'm not having to take my purse in my luggage because when I fly, I normally will just take my Vera Bradley wallet, put it on a lanyard and stick it under my shirt um, to keep it accessible. And then if some strange reason my luggage disappears or, or walks away or whatever, I've at least got my wallet and my phone because I keep my phone on me. I keep my, my wallet on me. Um, so I normally will take a small Vera Bradley purse and put in my luggage. I'm not doing that. I don't have to have a day bag. The one other pair of shoes that I'm taking, I'm going to put in my car because we're driving. So that I can easily change shoes during the drive if need be. So there's, you know, not any shoes in my luggage. So I just need to rethink things and go, okay, am I forgetting something or is there just things that I don't need for this trip? Because even my backpack has got room in it. So I need to make sure that my chargers are in my backpack and that kind of thing. So, because I travel with carry-on size luggage and a backpack. And yes, I know that I could put my wallet in my backpack, but I don't like digging through it if I need to stop at the you know, Starbucks in the airport or one of the little newsstands in the airport. I hate digging through my wallet in line or digging through my luggage in line to find my wallet. So that's where I just found out if I just pop it on a lanyard, pop it under my shirt or you know, under my jacket, it's still there, I know it's there and it's easy to get to if I need to buy something in the airport and my ID is accessible so just works for me doesn't work for everybody works for me so in fact I have several packing videos that I've done for different trips if you need different ideas and stuff. I know this is a scrapbooking channel, totally get it, but I kind of do a little bit of everything. I've got packing on there, I've got packing for a crop, packing for trips, packing for Australia, and nothing but a carry-on. Um, I didn't do Norway. I didn't, I was just too excited for Norway to film that one. What are you doing?
I've got pantry videos, meal plan videos, the whole works. So. He's trying to get into one of the one of the black drawers behind me. I closed it a little bit. He doesn't like that. So. He's gonna go find brother. It's entirely too quiet in the house. He can't have that. He must go find brother and attack him. So, anyway, we're gonna be myself and my mother-in-law driving so I also need to keep my luggage to sizes that I can manage by myself I'm not gonna have Mike there to help me pick up luggage and stuff so I've got to be careful of weight also But I'm excited. I like going on road trips with my mother-in-law. We never know where we're going to end up. In fact, I think I'm... I, ju I did finish, actually, because now I'm just doing the last little bit of 2015. Um, in 2015, we did an epic road trip together where we The goal was just to go to an Amish store in Missouri. We went everywhere, and then the last place we went was the Amish store in Missouri. But we were gone... I think two weeks total, just me and her. And, oh my goodness, we had a blast. And went to the Amish store, there's a huge, if you've ever been to Branson, there is a huge Amish store in Branson. And I basically just called my husband when we got there and went, um, I'm spending the grocery budget for this week here. We had my mother-in-law Suburban she stocked up, I stocked up. We filled that Suburban with things from that Amish store. So now we travel with a cooler because <laughs> we never know what we're gonna find and what we're gonna get into. That's also the same trip that we ended up at Loretta Lynn's Dude Ranch. Another reason why we travel with a cooler and just have a few snacks because that place is in the middle of nowhere and there are no restaurants. So we kind of had a cheese and cracker dinner that night. But just little things like that. We get into so much mischief when we do our little road trips. Ended up at the Bates Motel. Not the actual Bates Motel, but one that, ooh, I think it was actually called the Starlight Motel. Because I don't drive the Beast. The Beast is her suburban. I do not drive the Beast. And we took the Beast and she was getting tired which, hello, she did the entire road trip, she was getting tired, and needed to stop, and for some reason, where we stopped, there was no hotel rooms that night. None, don't know what was going on, don't understand why, but the only hotel room was in a roadside motel. And let me just tell you, I think we got 40 winks, got showers, got 40 winks, and we were up at like four o'clock in the morning back on the road. Um, neither one of us slept well, but it was at least made it safe for us to get back on the road. But it was, we, st we still talk about that trip, that, that hotel to this day. So, and with that trip, we stayed in Roberta Lynn's cabins. We stayed in, um, home like little rentals it wasn't Airbnbs it was before Airbnbs I think um, in Hot Springs or Eureka Springs I don't know if it was Hot Springs or, or Eureka Springs we stayed in um, a hotel that looked like a condo literally you could have it could have been an apartment we stayed there two nights because we liked it so much the first night we stayed a second night that was in Branson and a variety of just little bitty hotels along the way. And just got into all kinds of trouble. All, all of the antique stores that we could find, 
all of the second hand stores, Amish stores, mom and pop restaurants, um, Amish property that had little stores on them. That was a little freaky because I thought, you know, they, we kept following the signs that said Amish store, Amish store, Amish store. So we kept following the road and the sign stopped at this house. So we pull in and we're like, this is somebody's house. And it's obviously Amish, you know. And we're looking and then over to the side is like a little shed that says Amish store. And we're like, okay. So we go in and the first thing that struck me was there was no lights, which it took me a minute. And I was like, well, of course there's no lights. Um, plenty of windows. It was lit. Plenty of windows, but like no electronic lights. And it, it actually did take me a minute to realize, oh, hey, dummy, there's no lights for a reason. Um, but we're kind of walking around for a minute, and this lady walks in, and we're like, are you open? Are you, are we trespassing? <laughs> what? I don't, you know, we didn't want to trespass, but we didn't know if this was a real store or what. She's like, no, no, it's a store. It's okay. And we found the coolest things there. So, but little things like that, that you're kind of like, I don't know if it's a store or not. I don't know, you know. Is this just somebody's she shed workshop, you know? So, we just see a sign and make a left hand turn. So, I'm going to, I've got this taped down for just a moment. I'm going to take a tiny little break to step down the hallway and I will be right back. Okie dokie. Thank you. I needed that. <sighs> so we are eh, a little less than halfway done on the stitching. We got this. If it didn't add so much to the layout, I wouldn't do it, but it really does add a lot. So I don't know if you can tell, but I love traveling with my in-laws. The particular trip that I'm scrapping right now was a trip that I took with my sister-in-law and her family to Washington DC. They were going on a family trip and I kind of invited myself. And it, but it worked out well because her kids were young teenagers and I stayed in the room with them. I stayed in their hotel room and mom and dad got to have a room of their own. So I kind of acted as the nanny of sorts. There'll be no erping on my desk.
I don't know if you just burped or what, but don't don't be erping on my desk. Okay, them the rules. The fun part's gonna be when we, when we move into the new room, the window faces the front of my house and I've got two trees right outside that window. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have a hard time keeping the cats out of my workspace because of the windows. They're gonna be wanting to play with the trees and the birds and the whatchamadoodles and I'm gonna be trying to work. So maybe they will be able to get down into the window sill and have their spot and I'll have my spot. We have not figured that out yet. Neither one of these cats have been with us long enough to have furniture in that particular room. Um, it's We've been preparing it for my new scrap room. So it hasn't had furniture in there for, well, Biscuits is a year and a half old, so at least a year and a half minimum while we got our ducks in a row. Pardon me a minute. Excuse me, little man. No. No. It's funny. The other thing I have a feeling we're going to have a problem with is keeping them off the island. Because as you can see, they think they're part bunny rabbit and they jump everywhere. So. watching him get worried when he gets too quiet. Let me flip this back over. That's just a little long yet. A little bit longer than my arm reach. Now he's behind the paper. Great. No. You're going to have to back out. You got to get back out the way you went in. Uh uh. Don't. You better not be chewing. there because that's my paper. Maybe if I just shake it. He's biting cords back there. He's got a lot of room back there though. I've got some that paper's pulled quite a bit away from the wall.
Okay, at the moment he's not doing anything but laying there. So, he can lay on the cord. I don't care if he lays on it. I just don't want him biting it. Better not be fighting it. I think he's figured out that I can't dig him out. So, I just have to wait for him to come out. See, skip the stitch. All better. It's much easier to stitch when you're not filming. Now I'm trying to keep everything in frame for you. Come here, Bubba. Come here. Isn't it kitten nap time? Aren't you supposed to be sleeping? What you doing? Are you causing trouble? Hmm? Are you causing trouble? Yeah. No. 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 You can be in here as long as you don't play with the threat. No. No cords, no thread. No cords, no thread. Yes. Understood. Here, get in your box. Get in your box. He 
actually does really well about threads. Biscuit, on the other hand, if I'm stitching and he realizes it, it's game on. He wants to thread. Dumpling is really good about thread. There's no way I could do this if Biscuit was in the room. box baby. Good boy. That's a good dumpling. They were irritated with me because I had all of my stamp pads pulled off the racks. And I still have one small case over there full of stamp pads. But um, I had all of my stamp pads pulled off the racks, and they were all right where they sleep, on the end of my desk. Lay down. Nope. Lay down. Lay down. So they didn't have anywhere to stretch out. Their boxes were available. But they didn't have anywhere to stretch out, so they were irritated with me. So now I have at least my close to my heart inks are put back on the racks. So he's got more room on his side of the desk. See, now he's just going to sit here and chill like he thinks he owns a place. When the thread gets shorter, it is easier to stitch. But I tend to like a longer piece of thread because then I don't have to keep changing out my thread quite so often. And once you get into a rhythm, your stitches become more even. I think my meds just kicked in. Oh, I can breathe.
Good. That's good. My needle itself is a little bit longer, so sometimes it doesn't make the turn, so to say. Would you like me to move these so you can lay down? You can lay back now if you like. See, once I do this, the rest of the layout is going to be so fast that you guys aren't going to believe it. And if I wasn't filming, I would be listening to a book, I would be watching a movie, I, you know, talking to a friend on the phone, just, you know, different little mommy me times that can be done. A lot of times, if I know I want to do a lot of stitching, I'll start my laundry. And then between loads, that's a good break to put the needle down, put the, you know, put the layout down, go switch your loads in the washer and dryer, hang up clothes, whatever, and then come back and your hands have had a bit of a break. So a lot of times, that's I'll do that. But obviously, if I want to do a live, you guys don't want to hang tight while I go put clothes in the dryer so I will spare you that I can always do my laundry this afternoon so that's just different ways that I kind of break this up when I'm not stitching for you now the other thing that kind of slows me down just a little bit on layouts or, or the in-between changing layouts, which is why I only do one layout per live, is because I have to clean my space in between layouts. I cannot. I'm not one of those scrapbooks that does scrappy tornadoes or have craft lanches or anything like that. I, I finish a layout, I put everything away, I clear my desk and then I start over. And it just kind of resets my brain a little bit for the next layout. So that's why I only do one layout per live because you guys don't want to watch me clean that up. I like watching other scrapbookers clean their rooms. It just, but really for me, it would just be putting things back where I got it. It wouldn't be a, a disaster clean which is what I, I think a lot of people like to watch is disaster cleans. Because unless it is, and actually I haven't done this since I stopped being a consultant, unless it is a shifting product, moving retired product to make room for new product coming in or something, which I haven't had to do that in over a year. Um, that's the only time my room would look like a bomb went off. I 
I used to be as bad as I would have to actually stop and vacuum in between layouts. I'm not that bad anymore as far as that. But I definitely clear my space, clean off my desk, put everything back where it belongs. Start off with a brand new clean slate and then the new layout is fresh in my brain and I pull out just what I need for that layout. But it also means my room, unless I stop in the middle of a layout, my room is fresh first thing in the morning when I come in to sit down. It's ready to go and ready to start the day. I'm not looking at, it's kind of like waking up in the, minute, in the morning and seeing dirty dishes in your sink. I just, mm -mm, I can't do that either. So to me, it's just a nice way to start the morning with a clean desk. I did that even when I worked you know, for, you know, a nine to five job and I had a desk. I didn't always have a desk. Um, worked a lot of my career in the emergency room, so you shared a desk. But I would always reset my space. So at the beginning of shift, I would clean the desk, put everything back where it belongs, put things where I wanted it, because, you know, sometimes you've got somebody that likes the phone on the left side of the computer and somebody that likes the phone on the right side of the computer. So I would reset the desk to the way I preferred it. And then the next person would come in after me and do the same thing. But like when I had a desk and a QB, I would reset my desk every night and make sure it was clean and make sure that either my list for the next day or the first project that I needed to get done for the next day was, you know, sitting on my desk to kind of cue my brain as to what I wanted to do. But I would typically, before I left for the evening, put things away you know, make sure everything was tidy in its spot and make my list for the next day. This was before planners and before I started carrying, you know, planners that had my work stuff in it too. I had girls, you know, I had mommy planners for things that I had to keep up with in the house, and Girl Scouts and kindergarten and school stuff, but I didn't have a work planner until much later. But that's just, my brain had always been that way. When I did release of information, I would, you know, before I left for the day, make sure that all of the medical records that I pulled out to copy were back on the shelf. The only ones that were ever still at my desk were ones that still needed to be copied or um, if I was putting a subpoena together, the, the medical record director would need to see the copies and the originals before she would sign off on it you know, something like that, but if someone came into my space after hours and needed to find something, they were not sorting through piles, you know. I would make sure that, because I was a contractor, I went into these hospitals as a contractor, I was not an employee, so I did not want to take their supplies, their medical records, and have them all over my desk, because at the very beginning of my career, I worked at Tomball Regional Medical Center in Tomball, Texas, and this was in 1994. So I had been working in hospitals up to this point, but this was my first job after I got married. And I worked as an assembler in medical records, which it was the person that once the records, once the patient discharged, the records would go down to medical records and they would be just a piled, jumbled mess and it was my job to put them in order that they belonged. You know, it, it, I don't know if any of you are medical people, but it would, you know, discharge summary, history of physical, pathology report, surgery report, all of the nurses' notes, everything in date order. It fit my personality perfectly. But the other part of my job was I was there from 3 to 11 by myself. I was the only person in the department at night. So a lot of times I would just sit there and assemble records and listen to a book. But I would need to listen to a book with one ear open because the emergency room would page me. And it was easier, pardon me for a moment, it was easier for them to page me overhead and have me call a certain phone number. So I would have to listen for, my, for the you know, medical records page, blah, blah, blah. 
And what, what they were doing was a patient would come into the hospital, come into the emergency room, and they would need their old record. So think about it. This is before computers, before you could just look up the patient's name and date of birth and their complete medical history came up. So I would need to find that medical record and take it down to the emergency room. So it, if, you know, if it's, the medical record is somewhere that it doesn't belong, it's not on the shelf, it's sitting on somebody's desk, I would have to search all over the department, not only on the shelves, but also in people's desks to find that record. And then if it was on somebody's desk, I'd have to leave a note. Hey, taking this down to the emergency room. Now, if it's, you know, cough, cold, flu, not a problem. I had time to find the record. But I never knew if it was a stroke. I never knew if it was a heart attack. I never knew if somebody, you know, you know what the ailment was that brought them into the emergency room. So time was of the essence to find that record. And that kind of trained my brain to always make sure that I had the least amount of product and records on my desk when I left for that night. So I, it just automatically trained me to clean my space every night and make sure that everything was back where it belonged. So that if somebody the next day was looking for a particular record, it wasn't on my desk. And inadvertently, it wasn't my fault. Somebody didn't get timely treatment. So eh, it just, very early in my career, just kind of trained me a little bit. And it has just carried over into tidying my desk, you know, keep everything neat. You can go find Grandma. Sounds like she's downstairs. So anyway, that's why I just do the one layout. Long, drawn out story for that. Okay, last stretch. I'm just doing this one side and then we are done with the stitching. And it's going to take more thread than this. So no, your threads kind of have to be doubled the length of whatever you're trying to stitch to have enough thread. Are you bored, Bubby? Is nobody playing with you? Hmm. Nobody playing with the baby. Oopsie. Got a knot in the thread. time today I might run over and get I need some half and half and some whole milk and then I can make some ice cream I have some peach puree that I can add in and make a peach ice cream that just sounds good I have no idea what I'm making for dinner but I'm probably gonna make ice cream for dessert um excuse me we, d we don't mm -mm. That's not for kittens. Did you just burp on my desk? You okay? You good? You got the hiccups? 
Did you give yourself the hiccups? You did. So as soon as I finish this line of stitching, I will remove the cap so we can keep going. So I need to get this layout finished. I need to get it posted to the Facebook group. And I will also post pictures to my Facebook group. Mm, I have some flowers that are die cuts in the paper pad in the in the kit that I've got, so I may have to dig those out and see if they'll work for some clusters. We only have this much more to go. <laughs> My last thread that I pre-separated.
grow, grow through this. So I was thinking about taking the stars and just brushing them lightly with a shimmer brush to give them a little bit of sparkle. But then I decided, nope, I don't want to do that. I still wanted to keep it vintagey and kind of muted. Because I had plenty of time last night for the shimmer to dry, but I just was like, no, 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 that's not changed the feel of the layout. So I did not do that. But it kind of struck me because one of the suggestions that she suggested this morning was to add sparkle to the stars. I was like, okay. That makes me, that makes me giggle. Had it been any other type of layout, I would have done that in a heartbeat. Here we go. That wasn't really a knot, it was more of a knot all of the threads wanted to pull through at the same time. which happens if you get a snag. I do that a lot on my rings, so that the thread will get stuck on my rings. there.
Alrighty. So we still have this little bit of thread. So I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Because I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to just take it off my needle. And I'm going to put it on my empty one. And then I will put these away at the end of the layout. So for right now, just to get them off my desk, I'm going to put them on my little rack up here that I use. And then I clear my space. take a quick break for just a moment and then we will carry on. Basically what this memorial is, is granite, it was granite, um, granite walls, basically open air, open ceiling, granite walls with different little areas of statues that represent his presidency. So you have one art piece that is depicting people standing in a bread line, one art piece that is depicting a gentleman sitting in a chair for the fireside chats, a picture of Roosevelt himself, and a picture of his wife, which apparently was the first um, U.S. delegate to the United Nations. Did not know that. So, but there were trees and just <laughs> all kinds of beautiful things. And it was very rainy that day. So of course, you know, we were trying to do this stuff in between rainstorms and the trees were wet so they were dripping on you and it just was nice. I mean, 
it made the bronze, excuse me, the bronze art pieces glimmer and shimmer and just to me it added something to the memorial. I am using score tape on this because of the weight of the photographs on one mat. My family, my husband, myself, and you know everybody associated with our family, we've reached a point in our lives where it's experiences, not stuff. So we we want to, in our travels, come away with experiences. So a lot of times when I travel, we like to see museums and, and memorials and that type of thing. But I will normally only come home with a postcard or a button or something that is easily scrapbooked that will support my photos because to me the scrapbook is the the gift I give myself from the trip. Does that make sense? So I try to I will normally only pack a gallon size baggie and that is for all of the <coughs> memorabilia and ticket stubs and postcards. I do buy a magnet. I do like to get magnets to put on my refrigerator and I also have a magnet wall in the next room. <clears throat> so I, I normally will pick up a postcard, a magnet, and some sort of little pamphlet or something to tell me about what we just saw so that I have some journaling prompts. <clears throat> so for this side, because the other side is so busy, in the original sketch, <clears throat> excuse me, Allison has plain cardstock. There's nothing under the cardstock and under the stars. Pardon. My nose itches. So she's letting the stars tell the story. Now, part of this memorial is a lot of people, if you remember back then, they received their news by newspaper or by radio. So I have this great newsprint stamp that I just kind of did a tone on tone, mink on mink, to just kind of mimic a little bit of that newspaper feel. And it will not, because it's tone on tone, I don't think it will take the place of um, the stars. Now I do need to map this really quickly. So I need to see if I've got... I don't know if I've got enough of this left. Nope. Nope. I'm trying to use a scrap piece real fast. I don't want to cut a new piece. I don't have to. So 
this is a We Are Memory Keepers layering guide. And I found this from Heather Baltzer. She does a lot of videos on YouTube. And she was talking about them and I was like, those are cool. I like that. So I bought them and I figured we'd give it a try. Now I'm not using a self-healing mat under me, which I probably should, but I'm not. And I just messed it up. Oh, let's see what it will do. Eh, I just messed it up. Okay, we'll peel that out and find a different sheet. Okay. This is why it's called learning. Sometimes you figure it out the first time, sometimes you don't. Now, let's try again. So we have to make sure it actually butts up against. The photo. Or you don't get a good cut. And I'm not cutting my. My wallpaper. Not bad. I think I like it. Okay. And I did not cut my wallpaper. Even better. Okay. Now, this is where it's going to get tricky. Because I have to line these up. And I think I'm going to just do the best I can. And If it all lines up, it all lines up. If it doesn't, if it's slightly crooked, then it's slightly crooked. It'll just be what it is. I want to make sure my flat ones are the ones that are under the photo. So that's the one concession that I'm doing.
Okay, so Frodo. And then journaling. Yeah. I have one star left over. Okay. Now they used liquid glue. They said that was the best thing to use. So let's just not tempt fate and go for it. I'm not going to get out a ruler. I'm not. Ooh, do I want to use that one? I think I do. I'm not going to get out a ruler. I'm not going to worry about measuring. I'm not going to, you know. It is what it is. If it's straight, hot diggity. If it's not, I tried. This glue will dry clear, so I'm good there. So if it happens to smoosh out, we're still okay. If you look up on YouTube, if you're wanting to find other layouts with this class, just look up 6x6 paper pads with the Allison Davis, and there are plenty of videos of her sketches. And like I said, that's how I found them, was just her videos and watching other people do her videos. Allison Davis herself has videos. So, I am not reinventing the wheel. By any way, shape, or form. If you've been with me long enough to know, I don't reinvent the wheel. I'm a good copycat. You give me a good sketch, a good pattern, and I'm off to the races. Okay, 
So, this is going to go there. Like that. And title. Hmm, I just thought of something. I popped some of these up and I got to make room for a title. Didn't think about that. Forgot about my title. I printed this on vellum because I wanted the stars to come through. I will save these vellum pieces because they also work well for backing behind photographs. And I printed it because I wanted, um, I wanted it to be more than just handwriting. Okay, so I need to think for a second. Do I need to... I don't want to... I don't want to back that vellum because I want the stars to show through. What I was thinking I want for my title, I don't know if I want that for my title. Rainy reflections, would that work? Check the spelling real fast. Hold on one moment. Yes. Okay. My spelling has been checked. I think I'm going to change the title to Rainy F Reflections. I think that white's a little too white. I may go with gold.
Now. Nope, I think it needs to be the cold. Okay. So do I have enough room to put rainy here? And then reflections. Rainy. Let's just do it and see. You don't know till you try. This is the Anne fonts from Thickers. Sticky is all gone on them. I'm not gonna have to glue them down because the sticky is toast. If I move reflections over to here, or let's let's just see. Hold on. Stop a second. You see yourself and just do it.
course, I'll straighten it up. Or we could do it here. I like that better. Okay. All right. Liquid, liquid glue time. And it will, there's some squishiness, but it will dry clear. So I'm not worried if any of the glue squishes out the side. As delicate as these are, it's going to squish out the side. Sometimes more than others. That just really squished. So There's some cheese and some crackers mm -hmm. and some of that spicy sausage stuff that's not rich. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good. Okay, we'll see. If, if and you would like some delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a little messy. But that's okay. It will be okay.
kind of wishing the sticky had worked on these. Okay, that's a bit much. That's more than squishy, that's avalanche. Yeah, there's clear and then there's whoa. -oh. So, I'm so some of these are a mitt match. We'll see how that works out. I buy my thickers from Tuesday morning and sometimes they're on the older side. So sometimes you have to deal with your thickers not wanting to stick. But that's okay. This is just a lens cleaner little pad to clean the glue off my quickly so it doesn't dry there. And then this is just a little thing of quilting pins that I bought from the sewing section that is just really good for unstopping glue. So.
forget. stuff upstairs and help my friends out trying to solve a problem. Okay. Alright, I love you. Love you too. Uh, biscuit. Okay, so you're going to sit there. I said no. Uh -uh. I know what makes you guys think you can eat my food, but you can't. Sometimes you just can't pick crap up.
Sorry, when I'm thinking, I forget to talk. Sorry. And I don't know why, but when I think of Eleanor Roosevelt, or the Roosevelt's in general, I think of pearls. So I'm going to add just a few pearls to the layout. Okay, friends, I think that is it. Let me cut this one section of leaf off that's not going to... I think that is it. So here is my interpretation of the 6x6 six six sketch for Allison Davis week number one. Took a little bit of time even with the prep work that I did last night, but I like the way it turned out. Um, the first time you do anything, it's going to be a little bit nerve-wracking, but I think as we go and I learn more about her style because you have to remember I've only been doing her sketches for less than a month so it's going to take me a little bit to catch my groove on her stuff but I think I can do it I think I got this so this is week one I'm going to take photographs from my Facebook and then I'm also going to take photographs to post to her Facebook and we're going to call it good thank you so much for joining me today I know that you have a hundred and a hundred <laughs> I know that you have 112 different channels that you could be watching, and I, I am really, really appreciative that you take just a few minutes of your day to spend with me. Until next time, bye.